So I had a message that I wrote, and I worked all week on it. And then I came to the 1030 service. Pastor Philip was talking, and the Holy Spirit changed the complete message because the Holy Spirit is kind of inconsiderate and rude that way. But his plans, so I'm going to go with his message over the one that I wrote this week. And uh, in the 1030 service, Pastor Philip was talking about the story. I talk a little fast. I need you to keep up. So just a heads up. I get excited. Uh, in the 1030 service, Pastor Philip was talking about the story behind the song, It Is Well With My Soul. And I felt the Holy Spirit ask me, Kenneth, how is your soul? What? Like, I, okay, that's not really a throwaway question. You can just give one of those throwaway Christian answers that we're really good at. Like, oh, I'm good. It's on fleek. Wavy. I don't know what to say to that. It's just an intentional question begets an intentional answer. So I want to pose the question to you. How is your soul? If we were to strip away everything going on, the mask, everything that we're good at putting up, how is your soul? Is it overwhelmed? Is it tired? Is it fearful? Is it anxious? Is it busy? Sometimes it's so dangerous as Christians, and especially in this city, we get addicted to being busy, and we almost wear it as a badge of honor. The challenge with those things is when we get wrapped up in ourselves, then we miss the story because we see the surface. We see what's going on in front of us, but we don't step back. You know that moment when you're in worship and you realize there's something else in the room or it's not about you? For me, it sometimes lasts like 30 seconds, and I get distracted by myself again. But the point is, God is up to something. There's a bigger story. We are all part of the same story, but we're not the main character. The main character is Jesus. We get to play a part. Now, you play an important part, but we need to realize we're not the main character. It's like Star Wars. There's the Father, Son, and the Force. So, and then, or <laughs> Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Point is, we're like the Ewoks or the Stormtroopers. We're not the Jedi. So we're important. And we're a good part of the movie, and it wouldn't be the same movie without us, but we're not the main character. And the, the issue with that is that when we get caught up in that, we don't realize the story that the author is actually writing. Genesis 1-1, it says that God created the earth. Now, the thing is, Genesis 1-1, that's the first verse in our entire Bible. First verse. Which means he was already here. Which means he didn't create because he needed something. He didn't create a desire. He didn't create out of being broken, being lost, being alone. God was already here. Father, Son, the Force. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. I don't want to throw anybody off. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, meaning already a community in himself. He created out of abundance, out of fullness to share fullness with us. He created us in his image. What does that look like for you and I? It means we need to do life in community. And again, I ask you, how is your soul? And does anybody know? When God created throughout verse one, through chapter one of Genesis, he created, this is good, heaven's good, earth is good, wind's good, everything's good, sun's good. When he creates you, he said it is very good. First descriptor of you is very good. Let me do it like this. Uh, blue shirt, stand up. Blue shirt, yeah, yeah, blue shirt, stand up. Tell me your name. What? Jonathan, okay, Jonathan. When God created you, he said you are very good, whole and complete, lacking nothing. You should live glorifying and honoring God with your life. That's what his word says about you. The challenge is the world is going to get you to try to compare yourself to stand up, to, to top knot, top knot. No, but the thing is, top knot. When God created you, he said you are very good, whole, lacking nothing. You should live to glorify and honor him with your life. The problem is the world gets us to look at ourselves and gets us to look away from everything else. Write a blog. Your opinion is so important on Twitter. It's not. Your opinion is so important. Oh, my God, I got to know what your favorite Starbucks drinks is on Instagram. I don't. I'll be honest with you. Real talk, just so I don't want to offend anybody. If I have ever followed you on Instagram and your pictures are 90% selfies, I don't follow you anymore. Don't ask me why. I just told you why. Now, moving along, when we realize in Genesis, the first time God says something is not good is Genesis 2.18 when he says it's not good for man to be alone. A lot of times people use that scripture to talk about marriage, but it's not just about that. It's about relationship. Remember, go back to the beginning. God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, community in himself created in his image were made to do things in community. So the challenge is when we get away from that, we get so wrapped up in ourselves, we forget the people around us or we don't have a healthy community. How is your soul? Does anybody know? Revelations 21, where are we at? Revelations 21, 1 through 6. Here we go. Then I'm going to read this fast. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, and the old heaven and the old earth had disappeared, and the sea was also gone. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven like a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. I heard a loud shout from the throne saying, look, God's home now among his people. He will live with them, and they will be his people. God himself will be with them. 
He will, he will wipe every tear from their eyes, and there will be no more pain, no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. All these things are gone forever. And the only one sitting on the throne said, look, I am making everything new. Now, let's pretend this is Oprah. And you guys came into the show where we're giving away cars. And I tell you, go outside, you got a brand new car. And you go outside and it's just your car with a car wash. <laughs> Some of y'all are gonna be happy because your car is clean. Some of y'all are gonna be upset and disappointed with me because it's just your car with a car wash. The problem is we do that with the word of God. He's making you new. He's not giving you a car wash. He's not just rinsing you off. He's making you new. You are not the same person. Does that make sense? Now, when God says something, it has to happen. If you want proof, back to Genesis. Genesis chapter 1. In verse 3, he created the light and the darkness. He separated them day and night. Verse 16, we're on day 4. Follow me. He creates the sun and the moon. Verse 3, night and day. Verse 16, sun and moon. He doesn't need the sun for light. When he says it, it happens. Period. When God said, let there be light, he doesn't need a sun to give light. It happens because he said it. There's a show my wife and I watch called Blacklist, and it's about a CIA, yeah, right? It's about a CIA agent who has a lot of secrets. He came back to save this girl. We don't really know if it's his daughter or not. It's a, basically a documentary. It's on Netflix. Um, right now, season three is on the air. We were watching season two on Netflix. There's an episode of season two. I don't want to ruin it for you. Spoiler alert. Close your ears, uh, earmuffs. But he almost gets killed, and I'm getting anxious. I'm almost standing up from the couch, and I'm like, oh, my God. Then in my excitement, I realize season three is on the air. He's going to make it. When we know the end of the story, it changes how we act in the midst of the drama. Now, in closing, I only have a little bit of time. I want to tell you two things. One, when we know the end of the story, we know how to deal with the middle. Whatever you're going through, it's not over. Make sure someone knows you. God will minister to you to minister through you. But that only happens if we have the courage to share who we are and share our story. It's not about us, but we play a part. Thank you.